Hey folks, Ebbs here with HouseOfGuns.com. Uh, and I'm going to do a little promo section for you here for a minute. Uh, you might have seen it posted on my social media and elsewhere, not so much on YouTube. Uh, but I'm also part of another website, a sales website called HouseOfArms.com. We deal primarily in single shot rifle systems, specifically Thompson Center Arms and CVA uh, rifles. We just picked up the CVA Apex line of single shots too. One of my favorite barrels that we stock is this Katahdin style rifle barrel. Comes in limited calibers, 50 caliber muzzleloader, 500 Smith & Wesson, 460 Smith & Wesson, 4570 government. And I think that's it, right? <clears throat> Just a, it's a 20 inch barrel already on this short brake barrel receiver makes it a minuscule package. Uh, this is a Pro Hunter stock set, so it's got the recoil reduction system built into it. And this is my uh, Cryptek Typhon stock that Brett from Reaper Innovative Precision dipped for me. Uh, I put it on this stainless setup. This is an original Thompson Center New Hampshire frame that I did a trigger job on. The trigger's breaking under three and a half pounds, really crisp. It's got a hammer extension. This is called a triple lock. We get this from Mike Bellum TCs. We sell all of this stuff, including the trigger jobs in house. So I say all that to say we get a lot of questions on how does the 460 Smith & Wesson barrel behave? And we have some guys that'll buy these 460 Smith & Wesson barrels and a pistol in like a 15 inch and they're shooting it two handed and it is an absolute handful. But one thing you can do is you can get this rifle with this, this heavy fluted barrel and a 20 inch barrel. It almost looks like an SBR, this little carbine setup. It's so small, it weighs four and a half pounds and the recoil from these Magnum loads is very manageable. Now I've only shot the 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum in this configuration so far. I've said goodbye to that caliber. We're going to pick up the 460 Smith & Wesson Magnum, see how it does, and that's what we want to show you here today. We have these uh, 200 grain Hornady FTX, kind of their level revolution style bullet tip. has a polymer tip on it, basically a hollow point, but it, it behaves a little bit more like a ballistic tip. But this is a .46 caliber bullet in a 200 grain. Now. By comparison, a 45 ACP are most often 230 grains. So this is even lighter, and you can see the size of that if we're comparing it even to my thumb, how big that round is. This is no puppy dog. So it makes sense to take a straight wall cartridge like this and put it in something uh, that's a rifle platform, but something extremely compact and versatile such as this. Now these come, these Katadin barrels come standard with a Williams rear ramp peep sight. So you're adjustable for windage and elevation on the back end, and the front is equipped with a bright orange fiber optic sight. When I say bright orange, I mean this is designed to be shot with, uh, with both eyes open. So let's see how she does. Also with a gun like this, the hammer is your safety. There is no other external safety. Uh, so if the hammer is not cocked, the trigger cannot be pulled. When that hammer comes back, it's ready to rock. Here we go, fire in the hole. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. That surprised me. In fact, uh, did, I'm about two inches low. You can see the hole from here. We're at yeah. 30 yards. Yeah. Uh, but at the target, that hole's so big. We're about uh, about an inch low. Now, you saw it jump up because I was only supporting it like this. Uh, next time, I'm going to take a full grip on it. We're Wow, it is a handful. Even with the Pro Hunter Flex Tech stock, yeah, it's still a jolt. And I, I think your your assessment that it's similar to a 300 wind bag is 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 pretty accurate. Well, yeah, I didn't say that to them, but I I did say that to yeah. you. It's a hammer, isn't it? It is a hammer. Ohio and some parts of Michigan Ohio and have Michigan. now allowed these straight wall cartridges. Okay, during during their regular rifle seasons. Correct. Right. So, uh, but in a 20 inch barrel, we're still seeing good accuracy from this. Let me shoot one more, hold it in the same spot, see how close I can get it to that first one, and then we're going to stand up and shoot it. All right, I'm going to take it seriously this time. That trigger's nice too. Oh, I doubled it. Come walk down. Just leave it running and walk down and look at this. Now, granted, we're only shooting at 30 yards right now from a rest. 
but this is an open site, a peep site, as I said, and I knew that was coming the second time. I mean, there was no surprise that it was going to jackhammer my shoulder. However, that said, as much as that lit into me, I cannot imagine you clowns out there wanting to shoot this in a pistol. If you're more man than me and you want to do that, that's fine. I value my wrists. However, to be able to do this, the first two shots I've ever fired out of this, at 30 yards with these open sights, uh, I'd say that bodes well for the future, wouldn't you? Yeah. I mean, so you guys that are wondering what uh, these 20-inch catadine barrels can do, definitely take a look at them. Eric, I'm hearing that guys are having accuracy, uh, great accuracy out to 200 yards with that round. Do we know if they're putting an optic on it and what that what that optic is? No, no, I, I don't think it's optic. Well, that's impressive. Cool. Yeah. You can kill a pig so fast with this. I mean, it's so short. The way that it tracks is right. It's super cool. Doubled it again. Nice. Same spot. Same spot. Standing this time. All right, your turn. Not bad. I think it's, I think it's easier. Plus, I know what's coming now. Oh, yeah. It's way better standing. Way better standing. I could lean into it a little bit, yep, yep. and uh, it didn't hammer the shoulder quite so bad. Nice shoot. I mean, it's right there. Yeah. And it doesn't. It seems like it would take more effort for as big as that uh, that fiber optic side is on the front. Yeah. But uh, not fiber optic, but fluorescent orange on the front. But you get it there, covered up with it, and it's right there. Okay, folks, here's what we've learned out here in just 20 quick minutes of putting, uh, so, eight rounds through this gun. It's a single shot. It's not going to be a volume shooter, uh, but we hadn't shot this before. We knew the 460 Smith & Wesson Magnum is an extreme handful in pistol configuration, whether that's a six-shooter, uh, a large X-frame Smith & Wesson uh, revolver or something like that, even in the single shot Thompson Center style stuff, it is a lot to handle. We also learned, just here really quick shooting it off the bench the first time, that this is a handful, even in rifle configuration. You're four and a half pounds with this setup right here. Considering your irons uh, being your optic and everything, this is all you need to go hunt with. The triple lock, the aluminum hammer extension we have on here weighs nothing. The trigger job doesn't change the weight of the gun at all. The dip on it, even though that's a custom thing, it doesn't weigh anything. But this is a hot, hot round. We're shooting these 200 grain Hornady FTXs, and it feels like you're picking up a 300 Win Mag and a Revington 700, and uh, you're letting it rip. It's a lot against your shoulder. It's not unmanageable. You just need to know that it's coming. But you TC guys, or you guys that have been uh, shotgun hunting, maybe in these states that are starting to allow straight wall cartridges, big bore stuff uh, for your seasons, you're gonna find that this little setup that is so lightweight does not recoil any more than your 12 gauge or your 20 gauge slug gun if you've been hunting in a single shot configuration before where there's no there's no action there's no extra weight from that uh, there's no give from an auto loader um, or you could have this ported I mean that would be relatively easy to have your gunsmith do if you wanted to take a little off the front end keep the muzzle rise down and uh, take less coming back into your shoulder we also learned that even just at 30 yards but first off the bench and then second standing, here's my first two off the bench. They're touching, and I'd never used this rifle before, never used these, this uh, Williams uh, rear aperture and then front fluorescent. And then over here, my next two on the far side, this is standing, and they're still touching. Little low is where it hit. Uh, Dad's, uh, the impact was a little bit higher. He was up a little, uh, almost an inch higher off the bench than I was. But here's his two off of the bench, and then his two standing. And uh, we're finding out that uh, I think we're going to be able to stretch this out a little, whether we attempt it with the open sights or whether we want to put a, uh, a fixed optic, maybe a fixed uh, magnification or a really sturdy red dot or something like that. This could serve that purpose. So if you're interested in checking these out, we have great prices on these things. All of our Thompson Center stuff, CVA stuff at houseofarms.com. Now, this is still ends with houseofguns.com, but since dad has houseofarms.com, I've been overworking with him. He helps me with stuff. You've seen him on my videos helping out and shooting. Uh, it's a family event. So the Katahdin barrel, uh, pro hunter style barrel from Thompson Center. This one particularly 
and 460 Smith and Wesson. Happy shooting, everybody. This is embarrassing. I uh, I had it down and I pulled my hair. <laughs> Yanked my hair out. Maybe that's a sign. No, it's not. <laughs>